Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Mile Higher Podcast, episode 33. Yes, already episode 33. And today we are talking about the afterlife and spirituality and just religious, uh, different religions and what they believe about the afterlife. We're just going to explore the, the realm and possibilities exactly of what happens after your life is over. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited about this. This should be a very interesting podcast filled with really deep conversation. And we're, we're going to try to explore to this question of what is death from every angle possible. Yes, we will try to hit everything and hopefully maybe open you up to some new ideas about this topic that you may have never heard before mm -hmm. even so very excited about this but a couple things before we get started first thing i just want to say is uh the new podcast studio is done construction wise we are still fill, uh you know getting furniture and getting some of the gear that we need to completely get it completed completely completed but it's looking good i think it's yeah. gonna be awesome yeah we're hoping by like october to be in there so yeah most definitely yeah. i think we should be able to be, be in there in october 100 percent. so yeah. That's really exciting. Not only that, but a lot of you have been asking, how do we get one of the stickers on our laptops? <laughs> well, good news is that we do have merch on the way. It is in the process of being built. We have a brand new merch store that's going to be dropping probably in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So we will be offering all of the Mile Higher swag that you could possibly want, yes. as well as some other really cool designs I think you guys will really like. So yeah. it's going to be awesome. So yes, Mile Higher merch is on the way. And of course, all of this couldn't be possible without our supporters and patrons. We really appreciate all of you guys. And yeah, let's let's keep it going. I mean, this this podcast is on a roll and we just keep on rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so rolling down the river. Thank you all. <laughs> rolling down the river. You can't roll down a river. It's a song, babe. There's a roll down the river rolling song. Rolling down the river. Tina Turner, right? I don't know that song. I don't know anything. <laughs> Rolling right. down the river. It's a song. Is it really? Okay. I think. Yeah. Rolling, rolling down. The, oh, it's on. It's the on. The, I was like. Rolling. Rolling. Oh my gosh. I've never heard this song actually. Oh come on. That girl did a sick rendition of it on the floor. Remember? <laughs> I do kind of remember that briefly, but anyways. <laughs> Side Time tangent number one, those. get ready for lots of those today. <laughs> but today's Patreon question comes from Maddie. She says, hey guys, I have a question. Do you think the human race would be more advanced if we didn't spend so many decades focused on categorizing and separating people based on race, gender, religion, etc.? If yes, how much more advanced do you think we would be? So oh, I think a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, all these different things are all ways to separate us, you know, because if you think about it, we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all are different, obviously. But there's all these different categories, especially, I mean, out of race and gender, I don't think so much have to do with being advanced because I don't think it matters if there's male or female. You know, like, I don't think it's like gender specific, you know, it doesn't matter based on your race or gender because that's just like, you know. The flavor of human that you are is the way I would right, say it. Right. But religion, on the other hand, is, you know, I think a separate sort of barrier that can be created when I think, honestly, spirituality and religion should be free flowing between, you know, everybody. I mean, we should all be sharing our our views and spiritual views, don't you think? Like, yeah, I think so. So I, I think it's just kind of and we're, we're going to talk about that. This is a perfect question because this is a lot of what we're going to talk about today as far as like religion, things like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, some more of my experiences with religion versus Kendall's, you know, upbringing of a non-religious, how it was different and, you know, things like that. So mm -hmm. I think religion can definitely be something that separates us. But I don't, it also brings people together, though. Right. I mean, it's hard. It is hard. Um, but yeah, I definitely think if we didn't spend so much time like separating people, we'd be way more advanced because we'd be working together. Right. You know, and we have such a lack For the of common that. good. Um, imagine if the whole world like spoke the same language. We we're on the same team. We we're like team earth. Like how far we would be. Team human. Yeah, exactly. Team human. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously, you're absolutely right. I, I wish think. it was that way. Right. But I don't know. Well, we're going to explore, explore this question even further. 
But let's talk about some interesting shit that happened this week. Oh, yeah, this is we got two really interesting stories for you um, that are real things that are happening in our world that many of us probably have not heard of. And one is that Russia is starting to work on opening a Jurassic Park style research lab in Siberia. Sick. So for those that if, if you didn't know. In Siberia, especially in that region of the planet, they have actually uncovered woolly mammoths, remnants of woolly mammoths. They've even found a full, like, child woolly mammoth. Child. It's not a child. That's a horrible a cub word. or something. A I cub. Don't know. What do they call it? I don't know. Baby, baby mammoth. Baby, a baby mammoth, mammoth. A mammoth. But they're finding them uh, buried and trapped, but preserved within the ice. And what they're actually working on trying to do is to see if they can bring duh calf duh (laughs) but they're trying to see if they can bring these extinct species back from the dead yeah we talked about this in one of my videos last year on extinct species and we went over we did oh yeah we did no you're right you're absolutely right well you weren't in it but I did. Oh, oh I wasn't in it. <laughs> no, you weren't okay. in it. But you probably I have seen it. it. Yes. You probably watched it. I am and a we subscriber. We talked about all of the like just weird, like the dodo bird and that zebra that's like a horse zebra type thing. Yeah. And what's so cool what about this is like they are going to like bring it. Like what if they could bring back dinosaurs essentially? Oh, like, I don't know if we want that. I mean, they're they're literally making a huge compound essentially where they're going to try to raise these species and yeah these species haven't been on the planet for like fourteen thousand years can you imagine if there was like a place you could go see giant woolly mammoths just like that wandering would be, around i think such a success though like if we were would. able to do that it would be so cool like such a win like essentially like to jurassic bring back park a species like, like, there's a park like that but like how dangerous are woolly mammoths right. we don't know like their behaviors it's not like they've been studied in person by scientists we don't know like what if they're like evil mm-hmm. or like crazy evil. and mean <laughs> they're evil yeah i mean who knows they're kind of cute though i mean they're very cute i love in um ice age what is oh his name? yeah what's his name oh, god i haven't I seen know. that movie in forever all i know is sid is the yeah <laughs> the little i think everybody knows sid what is it what is he he's a, a sloth oh a sloth. he's like <laughs> is a, a muskrat is that even an animal <laughs> yeah it is the muskrat is like the little like weasel things that like muskrat. stand up ro- like all the time they're like Boop. that's a prairie dog like, pop I think. Up. well yeah they're like prairie do- oh no no no, no. i'm prairie sorry dogs? that is not a muskrat <laughs> What did I say? What I say? Is muskrat even a word? Yeah, muskrat is real. You said a peri dog. I was thinking of a meerkat. A me? Yeah, he's a mere. No, that's he's Timon not. is a meerkat. Yeah, from the Lion King. <laughs> All right. We need to go back to the zoo. I think we need to like. I think we just need to watch the Disney movies all over again. <laughs> we just watched Hercules the other night. That was fun. Oh yeah, the Greeks are. Yes, we need to do a podcast on the Greeks. Yes, oh, lots of sure. knowledge from the Greeks. But back to this uh, research facility, I just wanted to add a few more things. So they're tr- going to try to bring back the woolly mammoth, like we said, the woolly rhinoceros, the cave lion, the and rhin- breeds of long gone horses. The cave lion? Yeah, that's crazy. Ooh, what if they could bring? That's really cool. I hope they do. Or like the saber tooth tiger. How cool would Ooh. that be if you could like go see a saber tooth? <laughs> yeah, that's what they sound like. They <laughs> <laughs> <I> hiss. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure they're just so that would be so crazy though. Yeah. Imagine what you could charge people to come see them. You'd be like a hundred bucks a pop. It'd be like a once in a lifetime yeah. experience. To- I mean totally. If I mean, so many it, people would want to see it, they could probably charge so much. I mean, it'd be way cooler than Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they would like work on trying to re release them? Like like get enough of them, rebuild the population and then like well, let them free? Well, or that's is it the just thing. To, like, keep so, them no, no, no. So they want too. to like no, not no. It's not a zoo. They're not building a zoo or like a theme park. There, it's just a like oh. space of land where oh. they have research facilities. I, I pictured like Jurassic Park. Like, no, people get to come. N- n- yeah, no. That sorry, the the <laughs> my title was misleading. No, <laughs> but here's here's something else interesting though is that um, a Harvard geneticist, Professor George Church, plans to basically put woolly mammoth genes into an Asian elephant embryo by 2020. So he's going to make a hybrid woolly mammoth elephant oh my by 2020. Gosh, that's cool. And he's going to grow it in a lab. Wow. 
and he's using DNA recovered from a woolly mammoth found perfectly preserved in the ice in Siberia after dying 42,000 years ago. Damn. That's how old this thing is. Damn, it's so cute. It's like a, yeah, that's it's that's so a, cute. Look how preserved it is. It's crazy. 42,000 years. So, yeah, they hope that they're by, you know, marrying the two genes together that they may be able to bring back the woolly mammoth. This is like step number one. So it's pretty interesting. And it's I, I, it's honestly just telling at the capabilities we're going to have in the next 20, 30, especially like 50 years from oh, now. Dude. It's going to be crazy. Like, Seriously, buckle in. It's going to get we crazy. We might be like bringing people back from the dead. Like, who knows? Oh, like, Wouldn't that be wild? Dude, how crazy would that be? Oh my god! But the, I don't but know then, if I like but that's that. the that's the whole debate about yeah. consciousness, which we're gonna have later. But mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. Things could get really crazy, but we will see what happens. It's gonna be called the uh, Pleistocene Park, twenty thousand hectare uh, acre zone in the furthest stretches of remote Siberia. So we'll see what happens with that. Now this shit oh. completely flew under the radar. Yes. And you know, I I don't know. I I didn't even see this on Twitter when it happened, yeah. which was this I happened on the 29th, it. but there was basically mystery lights that were seen over San Diego which resemble the Phoenix lights. If you've never heard of that, it's a UFO event in Phoenix uh from the late 90s, I want to say that mm-hmm. basically there is like a bunch of different lights all in a row and they like m- they all well, sort like of like moving. hovered together yeah, yeah exactly without you know falling and it was the same type of scenario over san diego except basically you know people started like people got really good view of it and one person actually took a video of it from their apartment and i'll just play a little bit of it real quick so you guys can see this and if you're listening it's literally a bunch of little orbs all lined up like per like almost perfectly in a row just kind of hovering there Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I've never even I haven't even seen it. Josh just told me about it. Yeah, last night. so check this out UFO and it's called UFO lights over San Diego Yeah, this is ridiculous. Like That's that, an alien. One. Come on. They have like the flashing red not like these like fire lights that is so cool. Just a bunch of orbs up in over the city. What? What is going on? Okay, so there's another. And then there's a helicopter that comes that and flies in to check it out. Yeah, it's probably like, what the And it looks fuck? completely different. Whoa. Like the kind of it almost light. looks like it's on fire. It's so bright. I've never seen one that bright before. Yeah. Wow. And then why do they go out one at a time? And look, they're starting to twinkle now. And they're going to start to burn out. Dude, that's weird. It's fire, right? What's that? (gasps) Oh, there's another set coming up. Oh, another set. Oh, my God. And then they see that flashing light? That's from, like, a jet circling around. Yeah, because they're like, what the fuck Mm -hmm. is this? Mm -hmm. What is going on? What? And then they just like what? what? <laughs> then they just disappear. What? Okay. The oh hell my was gosh. That? Okay, so Josh and I were talking about this last night because I basically I just randomly brought up the amazing footage that Julian Solomita got of it's Sol- Solomita, right? I'm sorry. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Duh. Uh, this is Jenna Marble's boyfriend. He and her got this incredible footage of this, what I believe is a UFO over L.A. Josh and I were kind of going back and forth about it last night because the official story is what? It's a rocket, and it looks like the SpaceX rocket. It looks similar, I believe. To the rocket that they launched this year. Right. But it's blue, and it's also over L.A., and this is over San Diego. I just don't believe for a second that they are testing Highly classified secret new technology over the most fucking populated cities in California. Yeah, yeah. That's bullshit. They don't just launch rockets to test them out in L.A. And it took them two days to even get us the the official story. And there was like multiple different reports of what it was. On the other one, yeah, yeah. That one I'm like so sure was a UFO. And then that one you just showed us, wow, like same thing. It's San Diego. And it it really does bear resemblance to the Phoenix lights, like majorly, like very similar with the like almost fireball orbs. Like 
Yeah. I don't know. So it's the whole thing with this. It's amazing that this stuff is flying under the radar, though, for real. Yeah. Like, they're not no, really covering it. They just, I didn't even know about that. Well, here's why. The reason why we don't hear about this and why this isn't on CNN is because basically everybody saw this. As you can tell, people were like freaked out. People were like, whoa, what the hell is this? So the Navy actually came out and Navy spokesperson says those lights seen in the sky tonight are flares. An aircraft squadron is performing flare training about 30 miles off the coast of San Diego. The lights might be seen intermittently through Thursday night when drills are expected to end. That's, That's what all flares they said. look like? No, I have never seen flares that look like that. And they just stay lit in the sky in a little line? Apparently. Apparently. I mean, maybe. I guess we maybe, don't know for sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't know, though. I mean, though, if you go and like Google flares and stuff, so the whole thing with the flares is that you should be able to see them fall, like drop. They drop down as they burn out. Yeah. But those didn't drop out. They just, they, they like literally vanished into thin air. Like they looked <laughs> like they just, didn't look like they just yeah. dematerialized yes. out of that space. Yeah, and it's similar to other things I've seen. I mean, there weren't as many of them, but like we've seen other videos that Dr. Greer has and his documentaries and stuff that are orbs that kind of appear and disappear like that. I mean, they weren't in a line, but maybe that was multiple crafts or something. It could be. I mean, we it... saw something super similar to those. Remember? Near us. We like, we're pretty oh, sure yeah. it was at the airport. Yeah, yeah. I have video of it on my phone. We're like pretty sure it was just some type of testing, but there are these weird lights that were forming like shapes. Remember, it was like a triangle yep. and then it moved into a line like that. And they were just little orbs and then they disappear and reappear like that. Exact same thing. Which that makes me think that they could be some type of tech that maybe we've never seen yeah, before military and we just stuff. don't know yeah military because we do live near like an airport where they do that type of stuff a military type thing yes. so that's what we figured it was um because like if you think about it you know is the military really going to go like hundreds and hundreds of miles away to just test something when their base is here you know like maybe you know maybe they're just doing it and like i don't know i just feel like for things like this that are going to obviously cause people to like start yeah. talking about it, like why not announce release be like, hey, all these lights in the sky you're gonna see all of a sudden are not UFOs. They are, you know, yeah, just flares, but they don't. And honestly, like I think the flare thing's a little more believable because it wasn't quite over San Diego. Like the LA one was flying well, it over was the like city. over it, yeah. And I just don't believe yeah. they would do that. But if it was like thirty miles off San Diego out of like a official military right, which is site, what they said off the coast then that's more explainable like it's definitely weird it looks weird and maybe it is but maybe it's not the la one though like no one can convince me otherwise dude that shit is not of this world i do not believe they were testing their their most secretive shit in front of <laughs> los know, angeles you would, Come you would think on. they would have, but maybe denver even but not los angeles why would you do a major city? You wouldn't like test something in New York. Can you imagine if they're like, oh, yeah, we're just testing rockets over New York. Like what? That doesn't happen. Right. That's that why they happen. do that shit in like the desert New Mexico, yes. like where nobody yes. is. I don't like, believe it. I don't so believe why, it. I don't believe it. I don't know. That's just like I saw one comment on the video that was like, these are anti-gravity flares. But then I Googled that and there's no information on that. So I they don't know. could be, though. Those could be. Yeah. I think I'm not just completely convinced on the San Diego video. I'm just saying. The LA one, Julian Solomita, look up the footage, y'all, if you have not seen it, because it's just that one just blows my mind. Well, here's another thing that will really uh, kind of make you think about this is there is some sort of what looks like looks to be a structure off the coast of California underwater that looks based upon the Google map images does not look like a natural, you know, occurring structure under the ocean like of just a rock or something it looks like there might be like an underwater base off the coast is of this California. the base the i think we talked we talk, about the dulce before. base no that's that's in uh, new mexico oh no what was the one that's underwater uh i think it's just i don't, it, I don't we did talk about it. it was california and it kind of looks like a little yeah, yeah, yeah. Oval. it almost looks like a yeah like a ufo's parked underwater or yeah. something yeah, so yeah, i'm just saying like that. maybe there is off the coast of California, like ultra secret black yeah. ops programs happening underwater in I'm a base sure there or something, is. you know. And those did look like they were far away. They weren't hovering over the city. So I don't know. But they could one. be aliens for all we know. Yeah. I mean, we don't could. know what they are for sure. So it could be aliens still. Def could. They could just be <laughs> observing. Who knows? Yeah, for sure.
But That's I thought cool. that was really interesting uh, to bring up because I don't think a lot of people heard about that. So thought I would share that with y'all. All right, before we jump into life after death, we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's an online learning community with more than 20,000 classes in design, photo, business, technology, and more. And premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Skillshare believes in accessible learning, and the price reflects that. An annual subscription with unlimited access is less than $10 a month, making it one of the best deals you can find for online education. And Absolutely. Yeah. And we both enjoy Skillshare. I like the business stuff. There's a lot of like SEO. There's a lot of like... Google Analytics stuff. If you're you're trying to be an entrepreneur, if you're into photo, video, they got editing on all types of yeah. different types of filming, skyscapes, all these cool shit on Handy there. Handiwork as well. How to like do projects, DIY stuff, planting, cooking, any like all that type of stuff. It and really it's is very cool. affordable. It's really cool. Yep, and we there's an app for night. it that you can download on your phone. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months free to try it out. The first 500 people to sign up will receive a two month trial. Go to HTTP forward slash forward slash SKL dot SH slash mile higher four to start your trial now and jump on it because that feels fast. Yes, it does. So definitely check that out. All right. So today we wanted to focus on theories about what happens after you die and just talk about some of the different religions out there because i think it's important to have an understanding of everybody's belief system so that yeah. you can better you know understand them understand where they're coming from you know maybe we could work together a little bit more and less fighting yeah. more talking you know like yeah because i hope this isn't like a contested episode you know i'm like it's it's kind of sad that there's this a little bit of tension or or like worry over religion because you don't want to be like don't want to offend someone or disagree with someone and everyone is so different i just want to say now how much we respect everyone's beliefs here at mile higher podcast we seriously we w welcome people of all religions all backgrounds all beliefs and um, we hope that you can listen to this episode regardless of what you believe and just you know listen and yeah i mean well that's the thing is Kendall and I are going to be coming from a totally neutral zone when it comes to all these different things. Obviously, we'll share, you know, personal opinions about about things and things like that. But, you know, we're, we're going to approach this in a way that is more just sharing information with you and letting you make up your own decision. And, and I think that's what's been the coolest thing about the podcast mm -hmm. is seeing how many people of different backgrounds and religions and things like that that are all you know, willing to yes. open their mind and just think about all the possibilities despite, you know, maybe having a certain type of belief system. So yeah, I think that's really cool. And I think that's where the world it should be headed yeah. and is headed. Yep. So this is yeah. this is great news. So death, dying and the afterlife are obviously all shrouded in mystery because we don't understand death. We don't even understand really what it is. And, you know, what are all the effects of dying? So we're going to explore some of the different theories about, you know, death and what is there something after death or is there nothing? So <laughs> get. Yeah. I, th hopefully this is not scary. It shouldn't be scary. We're not it's trying not to scare, scare anybody. Me, so anyone. we just want I to, hope if anything, this helps people be less afraid of the concept of yeah, death, because over absolutely. the years I've become I'm not afraid of dying at all. I'm more afraid of like missing out on my life or like not being with the people I love, but like actually dying. I'm like kind of looking forward to finding out what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was I mean, a weird thing to say. I take it back. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's one of those questions that we, we won't ever have the for sure answer for yeah. until we experience it ourselves. Right. You know, it's like one of those things that, no matter how much any of us research or think about it, yeah. at the end of the day, I think all of us can agree that none of us know for sure what happens. Yeah. I mean, unless you've literally died, come back from the dead, and you can tell all of us what happened. But even some then, people they can't say for sure. That they do, right. But Could be your mind. But that's the thing, is like, what's really happening there? Is right. there some sort of 
illusion? Is it your mind, like you said? Yeah. So it's it's pretty fucking interesting. So it's so interesting as a human too, because like that's obviously something we all want to know is what where do we come from? What are we going to after? And are we even meant to know? Are we supposed to know? Is that part of the human experience is not knowing? Like maybe there's a reason we haven't figured it out. Like yeah. I think so. I think I don't know if we're supposed to know or supposed to understand it or if we even could. Could we even wrap our head around it if we maybe understood? if we can evolve our consciousness and, you know, evolve ourselves as human beings. I think maybe, maybe we could figure it out. You think other extraterrestrials out there know the answers to they could the beginning. Like if there's other advanced species out there, you definitely intelligent could. species. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how in tune they are with like reality and and spirituality. <laughs> There's aliens that just live in like a virtual reality all the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're like just on their computers all the time. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is something called biocentrism, which is um, a very, you know, much more scientific explanation for the question of whether or not consciousness moves on after death. So in 2010, one of the most respected scientists in the world, Robert Lanza, published a book titled Biocentrism, How Life and Consciousness Are the Keys to Understanding the True Nature of the Universe. He is an expert in regenerative medicine and the scientific director of Advanced Cell Technology Company. Lanza is also very interested in quantum mechanics and astrophysics, which is an interest that led him on a path to developing his theory of biocentrism, the theory that life and consciousness are fundamental to understanding the nature of our reality and that consciousness comes prior to the creation of the material universe. Mm. Let that blow your mind for a sec. Try to wrap your head around what that means exactly. That consciousness was here first. Well, he basically, yeah, exactly. Basically, his, his theory implies that our consciousness does not die with us but rather moves on. And this suggests that consciousness is not a product of the brain. It is something else entirely. And modern science is only beginning to understand what that might be. And there's almost like a universal consciousness too, like a a consciousness of the planet. Right. The cosmic consciousness is what it's called, which has been, you know, popularized by Deepak Chopra. He, he's very about this conscious, uh, conscious universe, conscious, you know, cosmic consciousness where we're all, you know, all of our our bodies are just our bodies. This is flesh. Yeah. It's not us. You know, us yeah. is our, you know, consciousness, our soul, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. that makes up the entire fabric of the universe. Yeah, that's cosmic consciousness. Yeah, boom. Exactly. So, this theory is interesting because physicists are being forced to admit that the universe could be a mental construction, or at the very least, consciousness plays a fundamental role in the creation of matter. Which is kind of this idea that if the body generates consciousness, then consciousness dies when the body dies. But if the body receives consciousness in the way that a cable box receives satellite signals, then of course consciousness does not end at the death of the physical vehicle. So this is an example of what's being commonly used to describe the enigma of consciousness. So basically it's this idea that we could be living in a holographic type universe that is holographic created like created by our minds like this it's almost like this is a an illusion i think is is what it's trying to say like consciousness exists before the physical world and this basically this you know form this biocentrism is the idea that our consciousness creates everything that we see it creates the world around us yeah and you know once we exit these vehicles like these flesh vehicles you know we go on to something else you know yeah. And this is from a scientist, which is so cool and groundbreaking yeah. is that, you know, scientists, astrophysicists are starting to understand that there's something more to this, like for for consciousness, because that's the biggest question that all of us have is like, what is consciousness? Where does it originate from? And they're right. saying not from the brain, because we've always I think for a long time, especially scientists and and people have thought that consciousness originates in the brain like, so consciousness is kind of like your soul in a yeah way. exactly well yeah a lot of people would call you know consciousness your soul and vice versa so yeah mm-hmm. interesting yeah <laughs> it is interesting so the hypothesis that the brain creates consciousness dominates the mainstream materialistic world of science despite the wealth of evidence showing that the brain and our entire physical reality for that matter could be a product of rather than creator of consciousness. 
The implications of this theory are immense. Just imagine if life after death were confirmed by the mainstream scientific community. How oh much God. would this un imp impact our understanding of science and religion and just people's beliefs in this world if like science figured out like the what's after this? But would like, it change more? religions? Like I think a lot of if that was like proven and everything, I think a lot of religions would adapt to that. And the idea that Christ is you think so? Oh yeah. You think, think they so. would evolve their beliefs? Yeah, they would. I mean, they if, probably if have to. If it was said, like one hundred percent proven, I mean, they wouldn't just give the up their belief. Is what I'm saying. They would change it to fit the new you think ideas. That I would hope so, but the reality is, is I don't think everyone would because, you know, I'll, like think of a lot of, you know, Abrahamic religions believe in, you know. The earth is only 6,000 years old and like a totally different creation story than the scientific community does. But that's because the scientific community has. But I guess they did 100% has... proven it. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. So if they were able to 100% be like, look at this. We can figure it out. I'll show you on. Look at this video. Yeah. It's this like is fact. This is at the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Right. One plus one is two. That I gotcha. Type of thing. I gotcha. So let's talk a little bit about near death experiences because this is. This is very interesting too and something that's being studied heavily um, right now. And one of the leading researchers in this area is Dr. Bruce Grayson. He's actually considered to be one of the fathers of near-death studies and is a professor of psychiatry and neurobehavioral science at the University of Virginia. And basically he has described documented cases of individuals who are clinically dead showing no brain activity who recall observing everything that was happening to them on the medical table below at the same time before being resuscitated it's wild. that's wild man <laughs> i mean fuck i mean i think we've kind of thought maybe this could be the case like I, I remember watching movies and stuff you know how did you ever like watch a movie where you know so it was, it was usually like cartoons and stuff or like kind of like the like ghost the like watch. rises out of the body and then like watches the like physical body yeah that's crazy and and the fact that like real humans who have been cl clinically declared dead and then resuscitated remember it's this. interesting how it's always from above too like there's there's a lot of these reincarnation stories where like like that kid who believed he passed away in 9 11 he right. said he watched yeah. his death from above so it makes me think That's... like is that your soul rising like does does or your consciousness they always say or... you know jesus rose from the dead people rise Maybe your your consciousness or your soul or your ghost or whatever you want to call it is rising out of your body and moving on. Maybe the energy like immediately releases. And maybe for some people it starts releasing and then like you come back to life and it like comes back in. Yeah. I don't know. That's just so wild to think about. Though. Well, if you think about it, I mean, if you if you think that people can actually lucid dream or remote viewing like if you believe that people can actually remote view it's yeah. the same kind of idea of right. being able to like take their consciousness out of their physical body and go to another you know rem remote location where they can be there but also be here at the same time which yeah. is so bizarre and I, I i don't know i honestly think this could really be the case as far as like this is what happens like shortly after death so he also described how there have been many instances of this where individuals are able to describe things that should have been impossible to describe. Another significant statement by Dr. Grayson posts that this type of study has been discouraged due to our tendency to view science as completely materialistic. Seeing is believing, so to speak, in the scientific community, which is 100% true. Uh, a lot of a lot of scientists are are very about you know seeing yes they need to see the evidence before they can believe it, mm -hmm. but the simple fact that consciousness itself is a non physical thing is troubling for some scientists to comprehend, and as a result of it being non material, they believe it cannot be studied by science. So in recent studies, researchers monitored a total of three hundred and forty four patients, and an astounding eighteen percent of them had some sort of memory. From when they were dead or unconscious, no brain activity, and twelve percent one out of, one out of every eight had a very strong and deep experience. So, the, and this is after people's brains stop completely, no activity after you know, say cardiac arrest or something. So, I mean, like percentage wise, that's not a huge percentage, which mm -hmm. makes me think like, why isn't everybody having this experience yeah. if this is what's happening? So it makes you 
have to consider that this is just like some like fuckery in the brain going on. Yeah. Like you, like your brain's just like giving you a, you know, a trip or a, a dream or something. You yeah. Know? Like I had a dream when I had my breast reduction. I had a dr when I had um my wisdom teeth removed. I was like convinced that I like watched from. A, like a third party type angle of the dot the dentist asking me if I wanted to keep my teeth really? and me saying yes like please save them and then when I woke up I was asking him like where are my fucking teeth and he's like we threw them out like <laughs> what? interesting yeah so like who knows what kind of like dreams or things you could have in your brain when you're unconscious is what I'm trying to say yeah yeah you're absolutely right yeah that's so <laughs> interesting but another study that came out of the University of Southampton where scientists found evidence that awareness can continue for at least several minutes after death. In the scientific world, this was thought to be impossible. It is the lar world's largest near-death experience study ever published. And in 2008, uh, another study, which was the largest of its kind, involved 2,060 patients from 15 different hospitals in the UK, United States, and Austria. And... It might be Australia, actually. And it emphasized the need for more studies of its kind to focus on cardiac arrest when asking these questions. So the study found that many of these patients were still aware and able to see following their biological death, but from outside their body. So this is another study reconfirming that. And it found that nearly 40% of the people who survived described some type of awareness during the time they were pronounced clinically dead before their hearts were restarted. So that's the thing is like, even though you can be clinically dead you're away clearly consciousness is still there at least for a few minutes after things stop working your heart starts stops pumping which is crazy That's really weird i wonder if you feel happy or sad in that moment because i feel like a lot of people who i've heard personally talk about near-death experiences like i knew of someone not personally but just knew of someone who had a near-death experience they were like really sick pneumonia like literally was unconscious in a coma for days and when she woke up, she talked about how she like went to the other side and like was in a teepee with a shaman talking and like how she was really happy and had no bad feelings about being dead, like was OK mm -hmm. with it. And and a lot of people that have near death yeah, experiences, say it's a positive. Say, yeah, yeah, like it was a, the most peaceful, happy place I've ever felt like. If you were, you know, if people weren't having that experience, they'd probably, you know, they'd come back and be like. It, it was, was a what? Yeah, terrible. yeah. It was so scary. It was like, a torturous, like yeah. I went nightmare. to hell, like yeah, something. Yeah. No, but it's never it's that. It's never that. It's always like yeah. I was like cool Positive, with it. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Peaceful like, experience. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely makes you think. Like what? What would be going through your mind if you died and you could? You were seeing your dead body from afar. Can you imagine being feeling happy? Like I can't imagine like looking at myself dead and being like, oh, this is so peaceful. I don't know. It's but that's so extremely weird. comforting, I think, to what <laughs> to, th to think about. Oh, oh! I thought you said it's extremely comforting to see yourself dead. I was like, what? <laughs> um, no, the idea of it being peaceful is right. very comforting. Yes, I I feel the same. Especially way. when, especially the fact that we talk about you know like victims of of crime and you know murder and things like that, and to think that you know people go out of this this life in such horrible ways, and to think that maybe. Even in that horrible moment, they're you know at peace and in in it's a positive feeling. Obviously, not a positive experience because you're dead, but at least it's you know maybe not as horrible as yeah you know I you're think a lot peace. of us think. Yeah, I think that's so comforting too because like like in John McCain's case, he was suffering from brain cancer. To I think it's comforting to think now he's peaceful and happy and not sick anymore. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are comforted by that idea. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people believe in something like heaven. Right. Or a any religion that for that people matter. people are in a place that you'll go mm -hmm. when you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. So that's and, and that's why I wanted to talk a, a little bit about religions because I think it's interesting to look at the different ones and look at how many similarities they have between them as well as you know where where do they differ and you know what does that mean exactly should and, we talk about ours real fast like our experience in religion yeah sure i think we've already kind of touched on we it have or a little talked bit. about yeah. it but we just for those who don't know reincarnation and stuff yeah um you should go first for sure okay so my my religious background is basically i grew up in a family that was Christian from the minute I entered the world 
And, you know, I was in, I was in the uh, cr- various different Christian churches. There's tons of denominations, Baptist, Lutheran, Nazarene, you know, Protestant, all of these different ones. And, I, and I've been to probably every type of denomination church. But basically, I grew up um, very religious. I went to church every Sunday. I was in youth group. I was um, very, very involved with the church from a very young age. I was in Awanas. I was, you know, I got a trophy for memorizing Bible verses. I've read the entire Bible, I think, two or three times in my life. And yeah, it, it was something that was a huge part of my life from, you know, age zero to about age 17, I would say, 16, 17. And yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, it was very interesting and there was definitely a lot of positives to it. You know, I obviously religion, one of the things that, you know, it really teaches you is good morals and just how to be a good person and, you know, how to treat other people. Um, but on the flip side, you know, what I ended up seeing too was a lot of, you know, people that were, you know, maybe, you know, hypocritical acting one way, you know, on Sunday and then during the week they acted like, you know, completely different. And you start seeing that, especially as you get older. And I don't know, it just, uh, it kind of lost its, I don't know what the right word is. It just kind of lost its magic for me a little bit. And I mean, it was something I always struggled with. And, you know, I, my mom would pray with me every night. She would read, read a Bible story every night. That was like my bedtime routine. And it was just like pounded into my head. And, and, you know, like I read so many different things and I was only allowed to listen to religious music. I didn't even listen to any mainstream stuff. I, I didn't even find out so many different like famous bands till like later in my teenage yeah. years because I had never heard of them. My parents never played it around yeah. the house. You never like, you didn't know like any movies or any music. No, no. So yeah, yeah I, I, it was that. very sheltered. I was a very sheltered and you know, my parents, you know, in, in their defense, they, they were doing what they thought was best for me based upon their belief system. Yeah. And, that, and, and in a lot of ways it shaped you into the person you are, you know, you're a really good person. you are nice to people you value service and, mm-hmm. yeah so. absolutely absolutely no and that that's the thing about it is i'm not going to dog on it because you go through things i did get to... a lot of good from it and yeah. i made a lot of friendships and you know basically i just got to a point where i started just questioning things and and you know i went to my pastors i went to different people at the church and they didn't have answers for me and then the, you know, it became more about just believing in something that had, you know, no concrete evidence to, you know, base it off of other than, you know, the book of God and and the Bible and things like that. So it got to a point where I just realized, like, I've been in this for years, 10 plus years. And, you know, I just felt like it was time for me to explore the world, really. I mean, I wanted to explore life outside of Christianity and religion and to think freely and that really started when I met Kendall actually yeah. and well you went through like a total like you know um, Period where you didn't believe in anything like you were kind of angry towards religion Oh, yeah, when I first got out of the church, I was like fuck the church like, you know, I was you were mad I was really angry because I did you know, I got I got treated pretty bad because as a judgment as I started You know kind of questioning things they kind of turned on me and they started making me feel like I was a bad guy. Like it was weird. I became the bad guy and that just made me more and more angry to the point where I was just like, you know, I'm out. Like, I don't even want anything to do with this. And, you know, obviously that could have just been my particular church that I was going to at the time. But I just was like, you know what, this is this is the time for me to step away and explore other avenues here and just see what else is out there. And, and the my whole family is religious too. Like my grandparents are Catholic. My dad's side of my family is Catholic, completely Catholic. And then my mom's side actually is basically Buddhist, yeah. um, Buddhist, new age, um, closer to what, you know, we would say we are. And they were always that like influence in my life that was kind of like question things and think. think about this and think about that. And, you know, I, and I actually lived with them for a time. Uh, a while back and you know I got to 
talked to them more and more about stuff. And, you know, they shared more about their beliefs and belief in reincarnation and things like that. And, you know, I was just like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah. you know, I want to explore other things. So, you know, they kind of help fuel that, you know, spiritual curiosity that I've always had because, yeah, for for about a year or so after I left the church, I was like, I'm atheist and yeah. you know, I don't believe in anything. You know, I just kind of yeah, we went. would kind of argue about it, too, because I was I've always just been like low key spiritual, like just it's always been there. I've never been like, I don't believe in anything, but I've never believed in anything specific either. Right. So we would kind of like argue about it. Yeah, like, we Why would. Are you so mad. Yeah, yeah, I was very just very angry and bitter, which I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you. Too, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, I was like. Basically, because I decided to go down a different road in life, my parents basically were like, we don't want to support you. Like, we don't want to help you, you know, because you're going against God's will, God's plan, our plan for you. So you're on your own. Like, and, you know, they didn't agree with my lifestyle or my choices or things like that for a very long time. So that's a big piece of it, too, is like mm -hmm. I was angry because my parents kind of, you know, abandoned me in, in a lot of ways like they just kind of left me and i was just kind of left to fend for myself and i mean that's a whole other story <laughs> but you guys have come around now we have come and... around and luckily i've been yeah. able to help my parents sort of open their minds a bit and get to a better place yeah. where they're just you're just comfortable with each other again yeah exactly and i'm not bitter anymore i don't hold any ill will towards christians or the church or anything like that anymore you know like that's all gone because mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's just like we're all humans, you know, none of us know. So, yeah, you know, you we're all in the same it. boat. Yeah. So I'm not going to hate you because you think one thing as long as you're not trying to like make cram it down my yeah. throat and force me and make me feel guilty or judge me. Yeah. Tell then, you you're yeah. bad or you're living a bad life. Or, yeah, Which that kind unfortunately, of stuff. a lot of people do. Yeah. And they kind of give religions a bad name for themselves. You yeah. Know, in a lot of definitely, ways. It's definitely a turn off. I've had. um a lot of experience with churches but not like josh's like a complete like our childhood was completely opposite yeah like you grew up in a very open-minded yeah free thinking household yeah my dad like his mom's like very low-key catholic so he never like retained any of that like, yeah <laughs> my he was pretty much not religious my mom same thing um so she would she would always just tell me like when i'd ask her you know, is is there a God? Because kids would always ask you at school. She'd always just be like, you know, it's up to you. That's like whatever you think. And she would tell me that hell, like what? It, she didn't believe in hell personally. So I never believed in that. But like I had so many religious friends. I had a Catholic friend. So I went to mass. I've gone to a Baptist church. I've gone to Christian Church of Christ, Lutheran Church, Presbyterian Church. And um, like a oh, youth group type thing, K Life. I did a want us to for like three times. Never won any awards. I was gonna like say, Josh let me see did. your vest. <laughs> no, trust me. I would show up and they'd be like, "So do you know your like Bible clothes?" Did you I'm bring like, your uh, want book? I didn't know I was no. supposed to do that. I'm just here for the cookies and lemonade, yo. <laughs> but like I, for me, I never had a, any time in my life where I believed in a religion. Like where I'm like, oh yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I've always been like. What do I feel most? I, I don't know. It's like something where I just internally feel like there's reincarnation. I feel an energy from the universe. I've always had that. I just never knew how to like put it into words right. or like explain what I believe, which I guess my religious beliefs now kind of align most with uh, pagan, which is just an umbrella term for believing in nature and the universe and like harm in astrology and harmony of the, mm -hmm. the universal cycle. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really me, but I've seen a lot. I've definitely been around a ton of religion. You went to I, church I good... with me like once or twice, I think. Yep. I did. I go. So what, what kind of church was that? It was a Nazarene church. It was oh, a big mega that to church. My list. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been to a ton of churches with people. I would just tag along with friends. There was one like next to our neighborhood. So I'd walk to it for like VBS vacation Bible school, right? Yep. Yep. So VBS. Hell yeah. VBS for kids. <laughs> Sorry, hell yeah um but yeah so yeah so you it's not like you have no clue like you've definitely no had the the christian experience and, and i was understand. in a sorority and there's a lot of like christian and catholic prayers that i had to memorize right <laughs> but i didn't really mean them, to be honest so i don't know i've definitely seen enough you understand, to understand it i mean you understand the premise of it like 
the, like Christianity, the whole premise between, you know, behind what they believe the afterlife is about is that, you know, you can only basically there's heaven and hell. And in simplest terms, in order to go to heaven, you know, you have to be saved by, you know, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. You have to accept him, you know, into your heart and you have to live for him, basically. And and, you know, you have to just say a prayer and basically you're in and then live live that way and basically once you die you go to um heaven and you stand before and before god and god judges you on your life essentially and if you're a christian you're good and you get to go to heaven and if you're not then you go to hell and i think one of the biggest problems i've always had with this is like you know there's plenty of good people that do great mm -hmm. things for humanity that are not christian so you're saying that and these are things i asked my pastor and and ooh. They they did not like some of these questions because I was like, so you're saying that good people like Gandhi die and go to hell mm -hmm. and just because they're a different religion or they are, you know, they don't they didn't believe Teachers. in, you know, Jesus Christ that yeah. they're going to spend eternity tormented like and yeah. just pain like hell sounds like an awful place. <laughs> yeah. and gandhi like people like really that scary. like i'm so glad i never terrifying. believed in it as a kid because i would have probably been really afraid of the idea of all that well and that's the whole thing right is like unfortunately a lot of churches that i went to definitely used this idea of hell as sort of a you know motivator to get kids to subscribe to christianity and and you know say the prayer fear. to yeah out of yeah. fear exactly and and honestly i was scared i mean i was scared of hell no shit. and i read christian books that talked about demons and everything else and oh yeah and dude. You used to have like night tears when i first met josh like he was so afraid of stuff like that and then and he'd always watch like these stupid movies about like the debt like <laughs> yeah, the conjuring yeah, and like yeah and then it would make it so much worse you would get so much yeah. so much yeah. worse after watching those yeah, because I mean that was just kind of a fear I always had. I always had like dreams growing up of like demons and like basically hell and stuff, and it scared me. And I would lay awake at night with anxiety, thinking about like if I, you know I sin today, I need to repent for my sins, or if I die tonight, I am going to hell. That's literally how I'd feel, and I'd get scared. Oh, like that's so as scary. a young kid, like ten years old, in my bed, like. Yeah, and then I'd like get out of bed, get down on my knees and be like, God, Bob, you know, yeah. and especially when I got into my teenage years, I got worse and worse, sinned more and more often. And yeah. I really just got like scared. And finally, I was just like, I can't do this anymore because it's yeah. like you have to ask for forgiveness like every day. And if you don't and you die, then you're like, are you screwed? Like. I can't imagine the pressure as a child of feeling like God is watching you, like yeah, someone's yeah, yeah, watching yeah. you at all times. Like, right. Yeah. Like I used to get stressed out around Christmas time that Santa was watching me. <laughs> I was like, eh, is he like, has he got cameras? Yeah. Or if you're like about to do something bad and you're yeah. like, is Wait, God watching me right yeah, now? Yeah. I can't. I mean, I never thought that. I never believed in like, I did. God. <laughs> I did. It, yeah. And it, it, it can create a lot of stress and anxiety on you for Dude. sure. I can only imagine. So unless I was afraid you're of, like, like monsters and stuff, I can't imagine like someone telling like an adult because like my parents would be like, that's not real. None of that's real. You don't need to be scared because monsters aren't real. Right. Like, but right. zombies aren't real. But like when your parents or your church and people that are in your life that are adults are telling you hell is real. Demons are real. The devil's real. Like that's scary for a kid because you're going to believe them. They're your adult. They're telling you this stuff. Obviously, you're going to be fucking scared of it because it's not just like a pretend story you read that you know is kind of fake. Well, they're telling you this is the truth. Right. They're telling you I'm that saying. this is literally the reality to things that their hell is real. That's the, very frightening. Satan, the devil is real. God is real. And the way to God is this way, following the Bible and, you know, following Christ. Like that's the that's the only way to heaven. Is there a like denomination of Christianity that doesn't believe in hell? They just believe in the idea of heaven or like No. No. The Judaism uh Judaism and Christianity all believe in a heaven and a hell. The th the difference is that the Catholic Church also believes in a place called purgatory, purgatory. which is like in limbo state kind yeah. of. I every time I hear the word purgatory, I think of a waiting room. I don't know why. I just think of like a bunch of people sitting in a waiting room waiting for waiting their, their like name to pop up on the TV in the corner like to They're go like, to heaven like fuck, or go to hell enough. yeah like that's even scarier to me because yeah. then it's like 
I could just be like in limbo for years or whatever, how much time passed before I either just go, go to hell or go There's to heaven. There's a movie with Christy Alley. I don't know if any of you remember it, but it was called like the tooth fairy. And it used to scare me so bad because at the end she like dies and she goes up the staircase to heaven, like the stairway to heaven. And then there's like, you can either go to heaven or you can go to hell in the elevator. And she like gets put in the elevator and sent yeah. down. And like, I used to get scared just of that. Oh yeah. Well, there's been tons of like movies and cartoons that have totally like played with the ideas of heaven and hell. Yeah. So, and, and that's, I mean, what it comes down to it, it's, you know, you believe in God, you're good. You go to heaven. If you don't and, or, you know, you do bad things and sin, then you go to hell. And that's essentially the premise of it. Whereas like, you know, Jews believe are, you know, a little bit different than Christianity and things like that. But they basically believe the same thing that souls of the wicked could be tormented by demons or, you know, destroyed at death ceasing to exist. So that they're, you know, their ideas are, are a little bit different, but it's the same premise. It's all based upon the Bible and what is told from, you know, Genesis. So Islam is, is interesting. I, I don't know too much about Islam, um, but basically death is a significant event in Islamic life and theology. It is, it is seen not as the termination of life rather than rather the continuation of life in another form. In Islamic belief, God has made this worldly life as a test and a preparation ground for the afterlife. And with death, this worldly life comes to an end. Thus, every person has only one chance to prepare themselves for the life to come where God will resurrect and judge every individual and will entitle them to rewards or punishment based on their good or bad deeds. And death is seen as the gateway to the beginning of the afterlife. Death is predetermined by God and the exact time of a person's death is known only to God. So it's, but it's, it's really similar. I mean, the main thing is the whole idea of like Jesus is Christianity's kind of, you know, leader versus like Muhammad is Islam's leader, which this is a very basic level of Islam. And, you know, th there's obviously a lot more to it, but at the, essentially it's the same idea that you'll be judged by God. And based upon that, you will either go to heaven or you will be, um, you know, sent to a dismal place. Now, Hinduism, which is one of which is one of the oldest if not the oldest uh religions known to man. And I find Hinduism very interesting and and Buddhism very interesting. So, Hinduism um has ancient set of religious texts called the U Upanishads. Probably didn't pronounce that right, but basically Postulated an internal changeless core of the self called the Atman. This soul or deep self was viewed as being identical identical with the unchanging God had referred to as Brahma. Untouched by the variations of time and circumstance, the Atman was nevertheless entrapped in the world of Samsara, the cycle of death and rebirth, which is um, what Hindu Hindus believe. Unlike Western treatments of reincarnation, which tend to make the idea of coming back into body after body seem exotic, desirable, and even romantic, Hinduism, Buddhism, and other Southern Asian religions portray the samsaric process as unhappy. Life in this world means suffering. What keeps us trapped in the samsaric cycle is the law of karma. And in simplest form, this law operates impersonally like a natural law, ensuring that every good or bad deed eventually returns to the individual in the form of reward or punishment. It is the necessity of reaping one's karma that compels human beings to take rebirth, to reincarnate in successful lifetimes. So that's the main idea is this idea of reincarnation. And, and Hindus believe that you can even reincarnate up to like 52 million times. Yeah. Like it's a lot of time before you get to essentially a place where you can go to their idea of heaven. They and believe you have to live like so, so, so many. many, like, and you have to start as like a blade of grass. Mm -hmm. So you like live through every species, every being you like, cause it's all about shaping your soul. Right. So interesting. Yep. So along with heaven realms, Hinduism also developed notions of hell worlds in which exceptionally sinful individuals were punished. Many of the torments of Hindu hell worlds, such as being tortured, by demons resemble the torments of more familiar Western hells. Unlike Western hells, however, Hindu hell worlds are not a final dwelling places. They are more like purgatories in which sinful souls 
experience suffering for a limited term. After that term is over, even the most evil person is turned out of hell to once again participate in the cycle of reincarnation, which I kind of like that idea of like, yeah, I really love Hindu ideas. that, you know, you can continue to improve yourself life after life after life yeah and if you do make poor choices and you know you go backwards and yeah. you have to kind of start over yeah and maybe you know depending all on like levels completing the full soul evolution mm -hmm, exactly buddhism is basically very similar to hinduism but Buddha accepted the basic Hindu doctrines of reincarnation and karma, as well as the notion that the ultimate goal of the religious life is to escape the cycle of death and rebirth. Buddha asserted that what keeps us bound to the death rebirth process is desire, desire in the sense of wanting or craving anything in the world. Hence, the goal of getting off the Ferris wheel of reincarnation necessarily involves feeling oneself from desire. Nirvana is the Buddhist term for liberation. Nirvana mm -hmm. literally means extinction, and it refers to the extinction of all craving, an extinction that allows one to become liberated. Where Buddha departed most radically from Hinduism was in his doctrine of anatta, the notion that individuals do not possess eternal souls. Instead of eternal souls, individuals consist of a bundle of habits, memories, sensations, desires, and so forth, which together delude one into thinking that he or she consists of a stable lasting self despite its transitionary nature this false self hangs together as a unit and even reincarnates in body after body in buddhism as well as hinduism life in the core in this body is viewed negatively as a source of all suffering and that's like one thing that people have issues with this is that you know are we really suffering you know in this life like are we all supposed to be like suffering in order to make ourselves better like depriving ourselves of these cravings depriving ourselves of things that we enjoy because it's all about the self like going within versus the external self so they they think you should do these things to yourself right well that's why monks and everything else they're very they don't do anything that you know they're very they don't do a whole lot like they just yeah. do it's all about they reflection, lot, the they self, they don't enjoy and in different activities yeah. and things like that. So, you know, it's kind of suffer now. See that that's like such a risk to me, because like, what if you're fucking wrong and you're like not doing anything and not living life? Like, what if right. this is the most life there's ever going to be or right. alive right now? Well, that's the whole thing. That's right? where I have trouble with it. And like, I love the concepts in Buddh Buddhism and Hinduism, but I would never like decide to become like serious about anything like that because i hate these structures i hate these rules because me personally i have just like my own theories basically that have come to me naturally that feel right to me and i don't think i think things happen to you in your life to teach you lessons so your soul can evolve but i don't think you need to make those things happen they're gonna happen shit just happens life fucking happens right. you don't need to make your life right. shitty Right. It will get shitty for you <laughs> and like you're gonna go through hard times You're gonna have challenges and based on how much training your soul needs is like how much you're gonna go through mm -hmm. What things are gonna happen to you? So I don't know. That's that's very interesting though different So it's all about reaching this this nirvana yeah. Otherwise you return to earth and are reborn until yeah. you can get to that state which just like not needing anything not I don't know anything. it just seems like such an endless that's chase such a big for rule. you know like yeah like how can i be sure though too. and how can i be sure that that's true well that's the whole thing right is like where did this come from exactly you know yeah was it this was buddha was clearly a person but i do i love their idea of karma and just the overall philosophy they have i think you're gonna like i think you're gonna like this next one we're gonna talk about which is spiritism um or spiritualism because i think you um you and I definitely have a lot of similar feelings with this. And basically, spiritism says that all people and animals that have been loved and had their overall vibrations raised, such as pets, continue to live after physical death. On crossing over, we take three things with us. Our etheric self or spirit body, all memories in our character. On crossing, wow. we go to a realm that we will accommodate the vibrations we accumulated from all the thoughts and actions of our lifetime. Average decent people go to what is usually termed as the third realm. 
Those who have been willfully cruel and consistently selfish go to the darker, very unpleasant astral regions because their level of vibrations would be much lower than the vibrations of the third realm. So it's kind of like hell. Yeah, yeah, in a way, in a way, yeah. Mm -hmm. But not hell in the sense of, you know, other religions. Information transmitted from the other side tells us that the third realm is a place of enormous beauty, peace, and light. There will be scope to continue to spiritually refine indefinitely. Those who earned it can progress to the fourth level, then the fifth and sixth and so on. For humans, we know that there are at least seven realms vibrating from the lowest to the highest. The higher vibrations, the more beautiful and better the conditions. Interesting. Yeah. It almost sounds like like the different realms reminds me of like the different levels of consciousness even. Like yeah. maybe our vibrations based upon our level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. and based upon our level of consciousness is the realm we end up in like what if these realms are just like other universes or something that are just you know that universe everybody's a higher level of consciousness or something could be but spiritualists accept the law of progress that those who are in the lower realms will one day slowly go upwardly towards the realms of the light even if it takes eons of time unlike all yeah. other religions which require faith and belief faith and a belief without evidence spiritualism is the only religion which is based on evidence and direct experience spiritism briefly is very similar um, to spiritualism and is based on alan kardec research which we'll talk about next spiritualism is the acceptance of empirically elicited evidence that the human consciousness survives physical death and that those who survive can communicate with those who are physically on earth in a number of ways this is what's really interesting to me this communication can be made through at least 20 different empirically validated processes, including mental, physical, direct voice mediumship, telepathy, xenoglossy, electronic voice phenomena, instrumental transcommunication, apparitions, Ouija board, deathbed visions, poltergeist, etc. Interesting. So it's this idea that, which basically explains, because that's the whole thing, right? That just throws everything off is like mediums and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tyler. Right. Um, Henry. Tyler Henry, yeah. Tyler Henry is like unreal. God, if we could get him on here one day, that would oh. be so cool. I love that. Yeah. Or Teresa Caputo. Yeah, right. I'm so interested in these types of people. They can do such... I mean, it's hard because it's on TV, so you I don't know, really I know. I know. But like, oh, I've seen some shit. But the thing is, is like I, the only medium I've ever saw, the only psychic, was horrible. So I've never had like a good experience, but I still like to believe in it because I think there's some legit ones out there. But I'd love to like talk to someone who actually, you know, is legit because mm -hmm. I talked to someone who's just wrong. She's like, oh, yeah, you're going to be headed to Europe and you're going to break up with Josh. OK, <sighs> sounds good. That clearly worked out. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she was just so confident about it. I was like, OK. <laughs> Yeah, no, I there's definitely some I think there's definitely some legit people out there that have a gift yes. of connecting with the spiritual realm. And that's the whole thing, right? Is I think there is a lot of empirical evidence to suggest that there is some other type of realm out there. I mean, when you look at the world, the paranormal world and all the weird things with that, and you know, if you do truly believe in a spirit, a soul, then why couldn't it be possible that there is this type of realm that certain individuals have a you know can communicate through yeah and that's like what ghosts and are. that's what ghosts are and so because yeah it's like how do you explain all the paranormal shit that's ever happened you if can. you don't believe that there's anything after death i know yeah it doesn't make yeah. sense right you can't yeah. can't explain it unless you're just like it's all fake everybody's just making it up but that's not true i mean we've had our own paranormal experiences i'm sure so many of you have had your own paranormal experiences and I don't know. I think there's definitely something to it. Oh, I do too. A hundred percent. What it is. Sometimes I think it's just like people from the afterlife that just think it's funny to fuck with humans. <laughs> Maybe, but that's the thing is there is an afterlife. Yeah. You're saying there is an afterlife. Oh yeah, I think so. But I don't know if it's like an afterlife. But like is it you an just afterlife park it there like, and you stay there forever? Yeah. Like. Is it a realm you move through? That seems more likely to me. A because I'm realm. sure if there is reincarnation, well, I guess I'm not sure. I have no idea. But it, I don't know if you would like jump right back in. Like, is it like as soon as you die, you're someone else? 
Or is it like you take a thousand years off? <laughs> like who yeah. knows how long our who souls knows? could be around? Yeah, who maybe knows? you do soul training, or you have to go back and look soul at your training. life and yeah. or plan the next one. We talked about that. Remember, souls like yeah. planning their yeah. life and yeah. why. Like, here's the things I need to learn. So, what kind of shit should happen to me in this life to make it harder so that I can evolve? So, it definitely makes you think about like your soul, like. How much of my life did my soul plan? Was I like supposed to be a YouTuber? Yeah. Was this all on my plan? I don't know. It's so interesting. It almost seems to me like there's got to be different stages. Like, it, you know, I think it's a process and a, there's a transition process. Like there could be even this, you know, temporary waiting room space, which is, you know, after you die, you know, maybe you end up, you know, you're still trapped to the physical world in a way, but you're in a different realm, like, or a different dimension or something. And you're trapped there for a certain amount of time or until you accomplish something before you then either reincarnate or move on to an entirely new world altogether, mm -hmm. another physical uh, vehicle of some sort. I don't know. It's, it seems like it's a very complex thing. I'm sure it is. Yeah. That, you know, our little brains can possibly not even understand at all. And we're so off. Probably. <laughs> all right. There's some more theories I want to talk about. But before we do, just want to quickly thank our other sponsor today, Quip, for sponsoring today's episode. Quip is a toothbrush, which Kendall and I use. And it is a fraction of the cost of regular toothbrushes and bigger toothbrushes. But it is still just the right amount of vibrations to help clean your teeth. Quip's built-in timer helps you clean for the dentist recommended two minutes with guiding pulses that remind you when to switch sides, which is super nice. So you always get the perfect brush. Next, Quip's subscription plans are for your health, not just convenience. They deliver new brush heads on a dentist recommended schedule every three months for just $5, including free shipping worldwide. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel wherever you take your teeth, which is super nice. Actually, I like it because yes. like so many of us like put our toothbrushes like right on our dirty counters and yeah. stuff. And like it's just so grimy. I love the stand that it you comes can put with. it in like a little stand. And it's like off of the counter, you know, and away it's from so your modern home. looking. I love the way it looks. I have a rose gold one and it's so pretty. It's the Tesla of toothbrushes, as, as we like to say. For real. And it is the first subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association. Plus, they're backed by a network of over 20,000 dentists and hygienists and hundreds of thousands of happy brushers who use Quip every day. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash mile higher right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first re refill pack free at getquip.com slash mile higher. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash mile higher. Definitely check out Quip if... Uh, you need a good toothbrush because they are very nice. Yes, they are. All right. Let's get into some other theories here. I had um, just I wanted to share. I had asked everyone on Twitter what they think happens when you die. And the definitely the most overwhelming answer was you go somewhere. Your energy continues. Your soul's recycled reincarnation. But I mean, this is our audience at the same time. So um, but I just thought this one was really interesting. This is from Hunter. She says, I watched a video once and it was a collaboration of people that had near death experiences. None of them knew each other, but they all basically had the same experiences. They discussed that when they died, their soul went to a place where all souls go. And when you go there, your soul gets to pick the journey that they'll take next based on their karma. So basically, if they had bad karma, they choose a life that is harder to live to clean their karma. And this is from people who had an, a near death experience that are saying, this happened. They saw this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, if you still have a lesson or if they still have a lesson to learn, they will choose the life that will best teach them that lesson. It basically stated that we all know what's going to happen. We all know we're going to die before we all know how we die before we come here. It's just lessons. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that in a lot of that ways. That was really interesting. I think, I think our, you know, purpose on this is on this earth is to definitely you know, be the best human being that we can. And I think there's a reason that, you know, humans are not, you know, inherently evil beings, you know, yeah. like we're not, I don't know. I don't believe that anybody straight out of the womb is a, you know, evil individual. Like People I think it's all, evil. I think it's all, well, it's all determined on the environment you come into. But maybe your soul's like super unevolved. If you you're think maybe, evil. It, yeah, maybe, you know, like, 
Well, think about all the fuckery that was going on like thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, how just crazy things were. Maybe it was because everyone's souls were really involved. And now we're a lot more civil. We don't kill it as much. Like we don't do public hangings or like we've evolved in a lot of ways and we're becoming like our souls are improving mm-hmm. overall as a, as a human race. Yeah, I think Maybe you're in a right. hundred yeah. years, our souls will be even more evolved and that's how you continue to grow into a type one civilization or who knows like your soul all, has to all evolve it, yeah and this is like teaching teaching the, yeah. the giant group of people which is one mass consciousness a, a lesson to move us forward as a whole <laughs> this one's interesting though someone this one <laughs> this person's named borderline fucking annoying on twitter and they said i don't think anything happens we just disappear we have no feeling no thoughts no consciousness just total emptiness that's a i think a pretty (laughs) typical atheist point of view yeah which i mean yeah i mean i don't know a lot of people think that my grandma's like for sure like nothing but then how do you how do you explain all of the phenomena that happens in this life like how do you explain you really all these different things how do you so you know we're all basically just the same as like a piece of dirt like like that's the thing is like you don't think that there's any difference between an highly intelligent being like a human or even more intelligent such as you know some type of extraterrestrial species in that we're no different than literally like a speck of sand or something like yeah that's hard to believe it's just like eh, with how complicated complicated everything is even that i was looking at a bug yesterday katie did they're like these they're leaf bugs and just like its chest is so cool looking like it's almost like like i wonder what material it is it was like breathing it looked like it was I don't know. It's just so complex to just have just been spit out by accident. Well, it's like, how do you explain literally the universe? Like, how yeah. do you explain all, how all this happened? This is all just chance. This is all just like there is it just there is a kaboom. And why do no so reason? many people end up being religious or at least it be, be spiritual? It's because we have this like sense inside of us to question, to wonder, to to explore that part, mm-hmm. because I think we have a sense that it's there. Mm-hmm. in a way yeah absolutely so yeah no that's it's definitely i mean <laughs> something that's still like completely fucks me up is is this idea that what if this universe is artificial though like what if this is a simulate like a highly advanced simulation you know you look at how far like computer games and video games have gotten and how we can literally create virtual worlds that are expansive and huge and can have tons and tons of things in it and like what if you know this is just a highly advanced you know computer simulation whether it's uh, you know an alien computer simulation or it's just the universe is just an a machine or something you know obviously somebody's got to control the machine i guess but I don't, I don't know. know what if it's artificial you know what if this is not but like what is real? artificial you know it's real to us it is well real. like even our, if, if it was created that means that there's like some right it's real to us no our reality yeah. is real to us because we're in the reality I don't believe but what if this reality is, is computer code we're all computer coded we're all I pre believe that pre-made I mean in a way we could be we could definitely be like engineered by a higher species or race like we could in a sense be a simulation maybe we're not a simulation that we're just like built by something like a grand like there there's an alien race doing a huge experiment on maybe on human beings maybe they plopped us on this planet i mean that totally could be but i know and they're just like watching us and seeing how we evolve because they made us i guess (laughs) which would then be like well if they made us then who fucking knows what life like what life after this is like that just throws yeah. a whole wrench in it i think sure. it was elon musk that actually said he thinks that it's like a one in billion chance yeah. that we're in base reality right now yeah he really believes like this is just like a simulation like this is not even base reality like it which is crazy to think about <laughs> i don't believe that personally but i mean he's like in technology and if you really understand technology and how far we've come and where we'll be in the future and You know, we what if we end up like later on in life, just living the rest of our lives in a a virtual reality that's made that's generated by a computer. I hate that. Like, what if we give up on the natural world or the natural world just like fucking hope just like crumbles and, you know, we are forced to then like sleep in these chairs and live in this virtual (laughs) reality world. I don't know. 
That seems so crazy to me. Or, you know, well, that's the whole thing. That's the whole, that's the big fucking question here is <laughs> fucking what is technology going to do to us as a race, a human race? Like, what is it going to do? Could it completely change how we live our lives? Like, could we become a part of technology? What if we start implanting things into us and connecting our brains to computers and we figure out that, holy shit, you can download your consciousness to your yeah. computer hard drive. Yeah, we've talked about this before. And then recreate it in a virtual reality environment. That's Maybe. possible. It's highly possible. We already can map all of the neuropathical, uh, uh, neurological pathways in your brain. But like, we there's map ne it. never going to be, everyone's never going to be into it. Like, you're not going to be able to convince everyone to like, become a cyborg that's never gonna happen no well obviously not a lot of people are gonna be like fuck that yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that i think we're further off than we think from that from the singularity yeah <laughs> which if you don't know what that is i'm not gonna tell like you humans, go watch that episode yeah we have an episode. episode on it so but we're talking about religion why are we talking about robots now because i because i'm talking about this idea that you know maybe you know maybe it's you know the end of the computer program and then that's just it it goes black i don't believe that <laughs> and that's it i don't believe that personally here's a here's a just a interesting kind of not really funny i guess but it's a some random guy who went viral on facebook he has this theory that what if when we die the light at the end of the tunnel is the light to another hospital room oh i've seen this there we are born and the only reason you come out crying is because you remember everything from your past life and you're crying at the fact that you died and lost everything. As you grow, you start to forget your past life and focus on the life you have now. But patches of memory stay behind and that memory causes deja vu. Think about that for a second. Totes could be. That's crazy. But I think you're crying because you're like breathing for the first time. It probably hurts and it's probably overwhelming and they stick like things up your nose. Yeah. And you're and you're getting squeezed out a hole. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I like your head gets your squeezed head. like as a baby Ugh. when your head's already a soft little pumpkin, you know? Yeah, a soft little pumpkin. It really <laughs> is. Yeah. Maybe like a little loaf of a muffin. Or a little muffin head. <laughs> <laughs> or a yam head. Remember yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Don't even get started on that. All right. Here's another theory. It's called the replica theory. And it's by a uh, philosopher of religion named John Hick and he suggests that the body and the soul are one He rejects the idea that the soul survives the body at the point of death What lives after death is a replica or a duplicate the replica comes to life in heaven as an exact copy of the person who lived and died on earth God creates this replica to live on after death Hick uh, John Hick used this replica theory as a thought experiment, but he does not actually believe this theory um, but stage one, basically imagine that you, Kendall Ray, who lives in America, suddenly disappears and an exact replica of Kendall Ray appears in India. This replica is, is exact in every detail, including memory and emotion. The replica thinks of themselves as being the Kendall Ray who disappeared in the U.S. Her friends, who are naturally skeptical, carry out a series of tests and are forced to conclude that this indeed is Kendall Ray, despite the problem of their mysterious disappearance because it's like like what? the kids that remember their past lives it's kind of similar to that oh. except this is like there's a physical replica of you just in another part yeah it's kind of a wild theory yeah yeah it, do it doesn't make a lot of sense to me but it's it's interesting um to consider basically stage two then asks us to imagine that instead of disappearing this person dies, and at the exact moment a replica appears in India, even with uh, the person's body in the mortuary, we would be forced to conclude that the replica is this individual, and that we'd have to admit that it had been miraculously recreated in another place. So it's like the, it's basically just like this copy theory of like when you die, a copy of you pops up somewhere else. Wouldn't we have like figured that out since there's so many people that die and so many people that are born like we would have probably connected a few of them. Yeah, I mean I feel like we like definitely would have like yeah come up with a comprehensive list of people that are like replicas yeah. of them yeah. in other places. What? But they do say that everyone has like a doppelganger, like someone that looks like them. No, I know. That's what's so weird is like there is kind of a copy of everybody in the world yeah. if you think about it. But like that's cuz like how many variations of 
But I mean, there's like seven fucking billion people. So what yeah. are the chances that there could at least be one other person that's like you? Kind of looks like you. Oh, weird. But that's that's weird to think about. Like there could be somebody else out there that looks like you. Just like you, yeah. Like huh. I look like David Dobrik clearly. <laughs> so <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe. Oh my god. But no, it's just like there could be a copy of you. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But yeah. Um. I'm trying to think if I have any other theories that I personally think like you've already kind of shared like what you personally believe I'm I'm still very like open to everything like I haven't really like decided on one thing but I definitely you know I'm definitely a spiritual person I think that there is a there is a reason for all of this and I do believe that you know the things that you do in this life do affect your experience like they yeah. do like karma is a you know if you want to use the word karma as a, as a real thing then you know if you do good deeds then good things will come back to you also kind of like the law of attraction you know you put good energy out there you get the same back yeah but i don't know i i, I think that there is you know possibly you know sort of a good good versus evil type situation going on like i didn't used to think that yeah. but Mm -hmm. I think it's possible. Like, well, it seems like there's good and evil in pretty much everything. Like, there's always going to be bad and good, black and white, yin right. yang. You know, it's mm -hmm. like positive, dark yeah. and light energy. Right. Yeah. Right. So, there's got to be, got to be something. I mean, I think both of us are just, you know, on the kind of all come back to this idea of like life goes on after death, and that you know life is eternal, and you know I'm I'm definitely um of the belief that you know all of us are tied into something bigger and greater sort of this collective consciousness cosmic consciousness whatever you want to call it we're all kind of plugged into it yeah. and you know that's you know and we're not the only conscious beings that are out there like i really think that there are yeah. and you could be reincarnated to like another planet to another planet another race of being mm -hmm. in another universe possibly i'm still the multiverse thing still fucks me up big time because i'm like Maybe it's not just like you reincarnate and go to a different planet within this universe Like what if you just go to a completely different universe altogether or that's like four-dimensional or six-dimensional <laughs> and you know, it's just completely different But your consciousness is the same, you know but, Yeah, but it's interesting that like, you know, a lot of your videos that you cover well in past lives and mm -hmm. people humans that have had past lives within this world and this reality is interesting too but that doesn't mean that everyone right, has everybody, it's possible yeah. that that's just like some, and then maybe the t the people that like have past lives where they don't or they don't remember their past lives mm -hmm. it's people that were in other universes or completely different situations like we don't know maybe it's really rare to be reincarnated back into the same one and maybe it's people that have unfinished business in this one but that also comes back to like how much of your life is planned is like if you died if you got hit by a car is that planned or does your right. soul be like fuck gotta like yeah. go back in and yeah like Retry how this. much of our life is Watch predetermined that. and that all goes back to if you believe in destiny and karma and all in law of attraction like so many different ideas um which seem to ring true in so many ways though like i i'm a really big believer especially in karma um, and I do think a lot of things are laid out in a way, but like you have to like things won't just happen. I think that's what a lot of people think too is is like in the law of attraction that if you just believe something, it's gonna happen to you. Mm -hmm. Like you can you're in complete control. You can just like be like, I want this car. I'm gonna pretend I have this car and then this car's gonna just fucking show up. Right, right. And I believe in the law of attraction, but like I believe in it in a very different way than right. some people do, you know? Right. But I think all these things tie back into our spirits and our soul mm -hmm. and trying to understand that as a human is like part of being a human. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I just find it interesting, too, that like all the religions, you know, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, they all have so many different, you know, so many things that are similar. It almost seems like more similarities than differences in a lot of way. The idea of there is the sort of creator, a God, mm -hmm. uh, you know, universal energy, whatever you want to call it. And that's the thing is like, maybe we're all talking about the same thing. And in, in, in essence, all of us, whether you're religious or not, believe in the same thing. Well, we are. Just they're describing it as God and, and you know, 
writing a story to it or, you know, giving their version of events of what they think happened. But at the end of the day, like you go back and you look at events in the Bible that, you know, show up in, you know, Buddha or uh, show up in Buddhism and show up in Islam. And there's just all these different connections. So it makes you wonder, like, you know, maybe because like, here's the thing is like people like to people like to create things that um, explain their situation and explain, you know, fits them the best, you know, yeah. so like there's that's why there's all of these different, you know, paths of religion. And, you know, we know a lot of it is man made and obviously man made and written by people. And at the end of the day, you know, these are their version of events like we're taking their word for what they're saying in these books right. these you know religious texts and things like that but you know maybe that's just their you know sort of how they perceived it well i think and there could is. they be using it to you know as a control tool as a way to lead a group of people rally a group of people which clearly it does i mean that's why you know religious people all get together and you know rally together yeah because they all share the same exact beliefs and it makes it easier for them to go through life and deal with things because they're all on the same page same, literally yeah. you know but in reality if there is a religion we are all the same religion right we are all if there's a god we're all right. the children of that god and like that, no matter what you believe mm -hmm. you're tapping into the same thing and so i think when people are you know, when someone who is a Wiccan is doing like altar rituals or doing something with crystals or meditating, doing something with energy, it's the same type of force and feeling that a Christian's getting so when they're praying and feeling praying like they're connecting. Church. Yeah, exactly. It's the um, same yeah. spiritual intuition You're that still we're tapping feeling into. Something. Right. And you think it's what you think it is, but like none right. of us know exactly what right. it is. So that's why like I just I can't stand people that judge and and you know, say your religion's wrong or your beliefs yeah. are wrong because right. mine are right. When in reality, we you don't, don't know. know if yours are right. Like, yeah, you believe that they're right, but you don't know for sure. So it's just like if we can get to a point in this world where we can all, you know, collectively believe in our, what we believe, whether it's, you know, a type of religion or not. And I mean, I think. But we're getting there. We're getting there. That's the thing. Like, it's like, people, absolutely. We still we talk about, you know, we have so many differences between race gender uh religion this mm -hmm. type of stuff but like think of where we've come from there were entire groups of people that were uh executed for their religion people were prosecuted for their religion like salem witch trials all that type of there was not as much religious freedom so the fact that we even have that and most people are really coming around and being respectful of all types absolutely, of religions absolutely absolutely and, and which backgrounds. is great which is very which is awesome and i'm so glad that this podcast is promoting that outlook and we welcome any anyone from any you know all yeah. walks of life to join in the conversation and and share your views and share your beliefs because we as live long on as you're the same planet others, like right. whether you believe this and this someone together. else believes that doesn't mean you live in two different worlds like someone's wrong someone's right and yeah. and like you may as well just accept other people as your brothers and sisters because they are yeah. and no matter what we all do come from the same thing we all tap into the same stuff so and I think I think personally that over over time and as we evolve or you know as human beings in our consciousness and discover more mysteries of the universe and uncover secrets especially if we all of a sudden start interfacing on a daily basis with extraterrestrials people from other planets and star systems and things like that it's going to completely um, I think it's going to completely shatter a lot of these you know sort of ancient religions that have been around for so long and 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 maybe not just shatter it but maybe it'll help explain it and help explain like who were these gods who are these goddesses who are these you know who are these beings that they talked about from yeah you know other worlds when we're talking about ancient civilizations egyptians and all these different things like and it seems like pretty much every civilization had their own beliefs or they shared beliefs with another civilization or something but no one just like didn't believe in anything i mean and as far as we know was there a civilization that just was like atheist no so like no. no or maybe some of the people maybe there, like neolithic people like maybe like people you know cavemen but even then i think they, they still probably could they still, still understood they still had cave drawings they still respected animals and saw animals yeah. as having spirits as well i mean that's been 
uh, a thing since the very beginning. So it's too. clearly a natural human thing. Yeah, to it feel is. Feel this to want to know. And to explore it. I mean, clearly that's why people have been listening to us for an hour and 30 minutes because <laughs> everyone wants to know. Who doesn't want to know? Right? right like right. when you go on a trip, you research what you're going to be doing on this trip and where you're going to be. But you can't research where you're going when you die. You can't like look into it, prepare yourself. No. You have, It's a wild card. No one knows until yeah. you die. Yeah, it's just like. And even then you may not know. Get ready for the unknown. Who knows? You may not even know. You may go straight back in. Yeah. And, the, and humans just never know. Never know, man. <laughs> never know. Very cool stuff, though. Absolutely. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there for yes. today. But definitely let us know what you guys think about all this. What are your thoughts? You know, what what's your guys' background? We want to know your guys' stories. Definitely leave us comments on YouTube or tweet at us at Mile Higher Pod. But thank you guys for listening today. Yes. Uh, we, I definitely plan on wanting to do an episode similar to this one where we talk about how life began because yeah. there's so many interesting so theories many and and different things. You know, we can maybe even talk about Lumeria and that whole story and oh, everything, yes. which is super interesting. Very. Um, you know, about the very beginnings of, of the planet and all the different theories, different things yeah. like that. So get get excited for that. Yeah. But it's been real, y'all. Thank you for joining us for episode number 33. Mm. This has been. Kendall and Josh on the Mile Higher Podcast. And we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>